This is another picture of the magnetic field. You're looking at it coming down. Current is running through these black balls that run into and out of the plane. The magnetic field swirls around the outside and creates a spot in the center where the electrons fly into. They get trapped in the center, making a negative point charge. Then you have positive ions coming in from different directions and slamming into one another and fusing together, which generates energy. Now, a discussion, and this is where we get critical of the device. Inside the core, most of the reactions happening are non-fusion reactions. They're places where ions like hydrogen and hydrogen hit each other and bounce off and don't fuse. That's mainly what happens inside the center. In addition, there is positive and negative charge interactions. This happens less commonly. The least common thing that happens is two atoms actually fusing together. Of the three things that happen, that's the smallest percentage. The key to this whole idea, the key to this whole idea working, is if the first two things, the first two reactions are extremely energy efficient. If the first two reactions are extremely energy efficient, then that third reaction, the fusion reaction, will produce enough energy for the entire machine to make energy, to be an energy gainer. So Dr. Bissard's machine has to be very, very efficient. And it's questionable whether it is or not. These are some pictures of his Polywell machine, different designs that they went through. This was the first design in the 80s. And then they went through various uh, redesigns. They didn't really know what they were doing initially. And then this machine is their last design. That's the one that they claim they got their successful result with. So a brief history of the polywell itself. The idea was conceived by Robert Bussard in January 1983. He went to the Department of Defense for money. He formed his company, Energy Matter Conversion Corporation, in 1984. His first DARPA study was in 85-86. He filed a patent in May 1989. And then he was under a publishing embargo. He was under a publishing embargo from 1994 to 2006. This is why many scientists and engineers have a hard time following and understanding this work because there have been no papers published on it and so it's difficult to critique or determine whether it is true or not true. He claims to have gotten his successful results November 9th and 10th, 2005. Over the course of 21 years of research, $27.8 million was spent on this research. Here are some statistics about the machine. I'm going to let people read this. I'm not going to talk about everything on this slide. Bussard claimed that these electrons recirculate 100,000 times. They move very fast, and they only have a very small lifetime in the machine. What Bob Bussard is doing is essentially he's like a cook. He's got three knobs. He's got the magnetic field strength. 
he's got the amount of electrons injected and the amount of positive ions injected. And he basically plays with those three knobs to optimize his reactor. Physicists are critical of this, but they have a problem because they cannot prove him wrong. The polywell is a very complicated machine, and modeling the physics inside the machine is extremely difficult. In fact, it's actually easier to just build a machine and play with it and test it rather than create a computer code which follows everything that goes on in there. As a consequence, physicists can't be sure whether Bissard is telling the truth or whether he's not telling the truth because we have no way of knowing really well what is going on inside. So it's kind of a crapshoot. He just plays with the three rates and tries to optimize how much energy and how, much, how many fusion reactions happen inside the machine. Um, this picture here on the right is his eventual poly well. It's uh, 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters, so a foot by foot by foot cubed. Um, and this was his last design. He made this design in the summer of 2005 after he had his eureka moment when he realized that he had to optimize electron recirculation. Um, up until that point, they hadn't seen that as a critical design parameter. And so that revelation was the reason why the machine suddenly did so well in its final phase of testing. So now I want to say what Robert Bissard is claiming. Dr. Bissard claims that on November 9th and 10th, 2005, his team obtained deuterium deuterium fusion at a rate of 10 to the 9th for a short period of time uh, using 12.5 kilovolts drive voltage. Just as a reference point, University of Wisconsin Madison did a harder reaction with 10 times more energy using a fuser. If this were true, this claim he's making, then the result would be 10,000 times better than the existing fuser devices. His polywell is four orders of magnitude of an improvement over the standard fuser devices. That would be significant. 